It is time to replace my toilet and I am replacing it with a Thetford Aquamagic Style 2. Here is how to change an RV toilet. First thing, it's very important to remember to turn off your water source, whether it's from the city or your pump. Even if you have never replaced a toilet before and it seems very scary to you, don't let it be. It's actually a very simple procedure, even in a house. The Thetford models make it really easy because it is just like a house. I had a Dometic one and they encased this whole area and I had to use a special universal tool to get in there and you know finagle my way feeding through these weird gaps to get the bolt inside. Super inefficient but these Thetford models it looks pretty much like a toilet. In fact they're even ADA compliant because of their height. So first thing I need to do is just remove these bolts. You got one on each side. Even with the toilets that have this encasing, the RV ones, there's usually just two bolts. Easy peasy. Now that my toilet is unattached from the floor, the only way it is attached now is the water inlet from the back. So the toilet has two functions, right? It brings water in and then it pushes water out. So the water coming in is usually in a hose behind the toilet, which is the reason why you need to make sure to turn your water off before you start doing this. So no water is going to be coming through that. And then the other source of uh, connection is the drain. So we'll disconnect the hose from the back. Well, unfortunately, this piece, this is the lid that's supposed to be part of this lid. It cracked because this was so tight on here. Meanwhile though, I can take this old one out Put the new one in. You can pretty much expect that something's going to go wrong even when you do something simple, but it's still simple fixes. I have a couple different options. This is the, uh, the coach side female fitting that broke, basically the, the actual lid part. And um, that is a, you know, it's a little elbow extension, but it's got these clamps on it. So the hard way is to remove those clamps and get that same elbow fitting. Or what I've always done in the past, I could just cut it off, put a shark bite on it. And if I do that, I can even get a shark bite with a valve that in the future I can turn the water on and off right behind the toilet, which is a lot like you'd find in houses. Uh, instead, as this way, I can never have the water on with it turned off right at the toilet. So if I use a shark bite, I can get that special valve and have that extra feature, which is always nice to have more ways to turn off water that doesn't turn off water to the rest of the coach. In the past, I have used a multi-tool to, uh, which is just basically an, an edge that cuts, it moves really fast um, to cut that. The only downside of using something like that is that it vibrates this quite a bit. And uh, you know, I don't want to cause any problems down the line. <laughs> so I'm going to try and use a razor blade and we will see. Scratch that razor blade idea. I'm using a <laughs> hunting knife. I love these. These are those uh, Swedish Mora blades. Super strong. Now I have this. I can bring this in to the hardware store and make sure that the shark bite that I'm getting is gonna fit this. This is supposed to be just a half inch, um, but I can bring it just to make sure that the end of the, the hose that I'll get fits this because this fits the toilet. And then uh, this is gonna be variable sizes in your rig. So 
you can't be like, oh, it's a half inch pipe or whatever. It's going to be different in each rig. So always nice to bring this and definitely this just in case. And I'm ready to go get a shark bite. guys well it's back to the abode I got my uh, loot from the store and then I also got across the way and I got some peanut butter and sauerkraut peanut butter for the dogs and uh, sauerkraut so I can have a hot dog <laughs> can't have a hot dog if you don't have sauerkraut and a quick stop to get some gas I'm gonna be heading out in a couple days so I always like to get gas before I get the trailer connected. Yeah, so the dogs get peanut butter every morning with their glucosamine chondroitin tablets, and they love it. Well, my hot dog's cooking, let's finish this up. These are the things that I got. Shark bite. Shark bite are awesome, like, I totally recommend them for RVs. I mean, they're just cool as can be. Basically, this is an attachment to a flat hose. So you can cut your piping that's often in the RVs and use this, you know, because otherwise what? You can't screw something onto that, right? So you get a shark bite and that goes into it. So then uh, for the end that is up here, you just get the toilet hose. It's the same half inch as regular toilets on the Thetford models. And then these guys connect. In fact, before I put this on, I might put one little thing of uh, plumber's tape. So that's it. This goes on. This goes on and then this connects to the back of the toilet and then we are done and then I can eat my hot dog. This is plumber's tape. It is Teflon. It's very thin when you touch it. It feels like you're not touching anything kind of. It's so thin. It's the same stuff that they put on pans. It's toxic but they put it on pans that you cook in. We will take uh, this guy. Now when you put connections together if there is a little rubber ring in there, that's what's called a compression. So as this screws in, it pushes in the rubber. So you want this to screw in as much as possible. Well, some people say, oh, well, if you want this to screw in as much as possible, you don't want to put plumber's tape on. Well, I'm going to put a little bit on and um, just one round. I'm not going to put a bunch on. And what the plumber's tape is good for is it basically just kind of fills in a little bit of the gaps. So I'm just putting, it just went around the thing once. So that's it. It just gives it a little bit more filler. So then I can put these together. And you can see this shark bite has a valve. So now I can turn water on and off right at the toilet, which is great. So uh, that doesn't matter if it's on or off right now. So I'm just going to tighten this as much as I possibly can. That way I get that really strong compression down at the rubber gasket at the bottom of this. Okay, now I just put this on the, the up here and I wanted to place it in a way, see how this already has a bit of a natural bend? Depending on uh, where it is, when I put it here, I might need to actually like do a little loop like this because it's kind of an odd fit. Really, I only need it to be right here, but they didn't have the right length. So I'm going to do like a little bit of a loop to get this to go on. Okay, so I'm guessing this is going to be it. Sliding it on slowly at first. And then there's a bit of a 
you'll feel it kind of bite <laughs> hence the shark bite and then you know it's on there otherwise you'll get water leaking out of there i can see a little bit of water that means my shark bite's not on fully all i needed to do was just kind of push it on a little bit harder sometimes stopping for lunch makes all the difference so now i can continue with the toilet install i've actually got the water pump on so there's water up to this point if i open this which i already tried i can get water actually coming out of here so the toilet comes with one of uh, these guys that just slips right in there and now place the toilet all right so now i can just uh, tighten my bolts down once i get that done then i can connect it back to the water as you are putting on your toilet because there's that foam rubber that you put under there it makes it a little squishy so you as you're tightening the bolts you kind of want to give it a little bit of a, a uh, rotation you know to make sure that the bolts are tightening equally down instead of you know getting a little bit of cattywampus in there and the reason why i chose the thetford aqua magic 2 is because these guys are supposed to have a little bit better uh, flushing mechanism and the flushing is what's the most important you don't want any of that to go because then you know the valves don't work and it leaks or or whatever plus personally it looks like a normal toilet <laughs> In my old RV, I had that Dometic and it was on a little pedestal, you know, it was on like this platform and it was just this tiny little squat thing, you know, so I like this because it's much more, uh, much more stylish. Plus I did see in there that um, it's actually compliant with uh, ADA, which is kind of interesting course my stairs to get up the fifth wheel are not ADA compliant but it's a good good toilet they've also been around really a long time too and last but definitely not least is connecting my water source which comes from there you know outside to the toilet very cool if you're watching this video because you're in the process of replacing your toilet let me know how it goes in the comments if you found this video of assistance or an entertainment value please consider supporting the channel's efforts by becoming a patron on patreon uh, or by shopping the Pippinings merchandise store, which you can also link to in the description of this video, or you can even find merchandise in the bar below the video. And many thanks to those who are currently supporting the channel. Your contributions are greatly appreciated. You can order this toilet and then pick your own color by following the link that's provided in the description of this video. Till next time, happy trails.